Good morning. Welcome to Compass Christian Church, whether you're here uh, in person or by Zoom. We're glad to have you here with our church community this morning. Uh, it's just great to see everybody. Man, just lovely, lovely to be here on a beautiful-ish. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a fall day. Let's just call it what it is. But we're just glad to have everybody here um, and to celebrate and to worship together. And as we begin that, uh, why don't you please stand and join us in our opening hymn, Shout to the North. Please join me in our call to worship. Come from every direction, north, south, east, and west. Let us welcome and worship Jesus in this sacred place. Come bearing all your gifts, behind the scenes, quirky, unique, and more. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with zealous authenticity. Come with all your identities, race, gender, sexuality, and all. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with our whole selves. And now join me in our opening prayer. Welcome us, loving Jesus, as we now welcome you into our hearts, minds, and worship. Let us transform and be transformed by each other so that we might perceive your presence among us ever more clearly. Amen. You may be seated. And as you are, I am going to invite our children to very quietly and very, very slowly to join me around this table. Come join everyone, gather around, stand up and rather make room for everybody. Can you scoot on around a little bit? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. 
whenever we sing that song, we know that we are getting ready to hear one of God's very special stories. Once every year, the people of God go to Jerusalem, the holy city of God, to the feast of the Passover, to remember how God led them through the waters to freedom. This year, Jesus was going through the city of Jericho. On his way to Jerusalem, crowds of people wanted to see him. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. People did not like Zacchaeus. He took too much of their money, so he was very rich. And Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus too. But Zacchaeus was too short. And the people would not let him through. So Zacchaeus went to climb a sycamore tree. When Jesus came, he looked up in that sycamore tree and called him by name, Zacchaeus. You come down. I must stay with you today. Zacchaeus was so happy, he couldn't help but come right down. But the people were angry. Why is Jesus staying with Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus does bad things. He is a tax collector. He takes money that is not his. Then Zacchaeus says, Jesus, I will give half of everything I have to the poor. And if I have taken money that doesn't belong to me, I will give it back four times more. And Jesus said to the people, I, the special Son of God, 
have come to find and to save everyone who is lost. I wonder, what would it be like to be so short that you can't see anything you want to see? I know because I've lived it. I've lived it too, my friend. <laughs> I've lived it too. I wonder how Jesus felt, or how Zacchaeus felt when Jesus said his name. He kind of felt like proud because like, Jesus is like one of the best persons and people in the world. And then like having your name called out would give you so much pride. Yep. I wonder what Jesus felt. I wonder what Jesus and Zacchaeus said to each other as they walked down the road. I wonder if it was hard for Zacchaeus to give back all that money. I wonder how he felt when he gave things to the poor. I wonder how the poor felt when they received what Zacchaeus gave. And I wonder how Zacchaeus felt when he was finally right with God and right with all the people. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for sending your Son to help us to become right with you and right with all your people. Thank you for Zacchaeus and the example that he sets for all of us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Quietly stay right here as I put our story back in its very special box. quietly and slowly we're not going to worship in wonder today you're all going to stay here in worship with us but there are some materials back on the table that each of you can get but remember we're in a mind of worship thank you Good morning. I hope I don't get fired from that part of the job of worship and wonder because I didn't sit on the ground. I tried to get down and <laughs> it's just not pretty these days to get all the way down and all the way back up. Thank you for allowing me to share in worship and wonder. I am a trained storyteller as well as teacher of worship and wonder. And being the pastor, I don't always get to do it very often. So whenever there's a fifth Sunday or we have special services like Christmas and Easter, I get the joy of sharing our worship and wonder stories with you. And they are always looking for storytellers, if any of you all can help out with that. Good morning, church on Zoom. It is good to have you with us this morning. I think I only have a couple of prayer requests to share with you this morning. As many of you know, we are present on social media pretty heavily now with Facebook and our website being all redesigned. So this week we have a prayer that came through our Facebook page.
So locally, this final Sunday of October, we pray for our search committee, already at work discerning the next pastor of Compass Christian Church. We continue to pray for safety, for threats of attack and violence in our local schools, our community, and our region. And today, globally, we are praying for the people of Guatemala. We pray that they feel within themselves the life-giving force of love so that together, along with good organizations, they can face the tyrants who hoard wealth and power and hurt so many in their country. So as we prepare then for this time of prayer, let's sing together, Change My Heart, O oh God. just a few moments in silent prayer, lifting before God our own joys and concerns and laying at God's feet our own sins and repentances. After a pause, I will then share our pastoral prayer aloud, and after that, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. I do invite you to pray that Lord's Prayer using any words or any language that you feel comfortable praying for that is your prayer today. Let us pray together. God of trees and pathways, you stand ready for us to gaze in your direction. As Jesus walked down the Jericho path, observing Zacchaeus, help us to remember that you are continually present to us, watching and guiding our steps. When we falter, O oh God, you pick us up, dust us off, and place us back on the path. When we run in directions that are harmful, you are ready to rescue and redeem us. When we shout out our disbelief, you offer to us your love and are ready to receive us. God, today as we have gathered, give us courage and strength to serve you in all that we do. Remind us again that you are not looking for us to be perfect before we come to you, for you will take our rough edges and make them smooth. You will find the sparkling gem in the rough stone. You, O oh God, will help us learn to serve and witness to your love. Let us place our trust and our lives in your loving care. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Listen for God's word. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Here ends our reading. May God bless our hearing and understanding. Would you pray with me? And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Just looking, thank you. When a salesperson in a store approaches us to see if they can be of any assistance, we may see, say these words to keep them at a safe distance. Just looking, thank you. We're interested, but not willing to commit. Curious, but don't want someone pressuring us into making a purchase. Just looking, thank you. Zacchaeus was curious that day when Jesus came to Jericho. The crowd was big and he was small. So shimmying up a sycamore tree seemed like the perfect solution. He was high above the noisy crowd and he could get a glimpse of Jesus from a safe distance. Besides, let's admit it, he didn't have any friends in the crowd anyway. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector for the Roman government in this prosperous town. And his position may have made him the most hated man in all of Jericho. He worked for the occupying forces and was therefore traitor to his own people. What's more is he made money off his neighbors as part of a system primed for corruption. He was obliged to send in only what the Romans expected. Anything he took in, it, took in above that, he was free to keep. He was wealthy, reads our text. In his case, an indictment rather than a description. Who would have made room for him in the crowd? Who would want to be seen with him? One day, along comes Jesus. The word has spread about Jesus, and Zacchaeus is one of the many in Jericho who want to see him. But what does Zacchaeus expect to see? Would he like to see, what would he like to see in Jesus? And would he like what he saw in Jesus or not? On the one hand, maybe he has heard that Jesus was known for eating with tax collectors and sinners. Maybe he has heard that in some of Jesus' stories, it's the tax collector who is the hero and the Pharisees who come across as the fools. 
Maybe he has heard that a man named Levi, who was actually a tax collector, is among Jesus' closest followers. Then on the other hand, maybe Zacchaeus has heard that Jesus told the rich men to sell all that he had and follow him. Maybe he has heard that Jesus' statement that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. And as for Levi, he did have to leave his tax collector's booth behind in order to follow this Jesus. So maybe the most we can say with any confidence today about Zacchaeus is that he was curious. He wants to see Jesus. He doesn't want to meet him. He doesn't want to touch him or be touched by him. He certainly doesn't come to him for healing. He wants to observe him from a safe distance. Zacchaeus thinks he is safe in the tree where he can watch, where no one will confuse him with the cheering crowd, where no one needs to know where he stands, where he can't be touched or touch where he is safe to say, just looking, thank you, if anyone accidentally spies him up there. And suddenly, this strange little man in a tree seems a little more familiar, doesn't he? Don't we all have times when it's easier to stay in our tree? to watch the events of the world as a spectator rather than come down and get involved, rather than come down amongst the crowd and the dirt and the noise and the needs and the confusion and put one foot in front of the other to actually follow Jesus? Isn't it easier for us to sometimes say, just looking, when asked to help or to give or to get involved? Now there's a different story or a different sermon for those among us who do try to do everything, who actually need to learn to say no, who need to work on some Sabbath time. You know who you are. But for others of us, it is time to get involved, to stop being a spectator and join the action. Maybe it is time to take on some ministry in the church, to get involved in the community. Maybe it's time to vote, to serve, to say yes. Sometimes getting involved in a church takes a leap of faith. Church shopping is not a bad thing. Many of us shopped our way right into the Disciples of Christ or into this particular congregation. It's important for people to look around, to explore different faith communities, to find a place where they can worship grow, participate, serve, be at home, and yet be challenged too. But there can be a danger sometimes that people don't ever come down out of the tree and say, this is it. Here I am. I'm getting involved. Or if it's our faith lives, Wanting to see Jesus is a good thing, but do we keep him at arm's length? Do we ponder Jesus from a distance rather than meet him, come to know him, love him, to serve him, or to be changed by him? 
rather than grow more and more into his image and likeness, rather than discover the meaning of our lives through a deep relationship with him, empowered by prayer, nurtured by participation in a faith community, and nourished by our sacraments. That day in Jerusalem, Jesus looked up into the tree. He sees the little man clinging to his branch and commands him to hurry down because Jesus needs him. His hospitality, his welcome, his company, yes, maybe even his wealth. Jesus plucks Zacchaeus out of his tree and, G and Zacchaeus is happy to welcome him. Zacchaeus could have said no. It would have cost Zacchaeus much less. It would have attracted less attention. It would have prevented the townspeople from having one more reason to grumble about something Zacchaeus did. And we know too it may seem easier to go on with our own lives and continue our preoccupation with ourselves and our own agendas rather than allow the Messiah to invite himself over to lunch and allow him to delve into our truest selves. It might be easier to say, just looking, thank you. But if we're honest, we know from experience that it is not easier to go on with our preoccupations, to try to take care of our own worries ourselves, that actually there is a tremendous ease and grace in letting Jesus take our burdens from us, to giving ourselves over to Christ, to letting Christ set our agendas. It really is easier to stop scrambling up trees and allow ourselves the one to know the one who knows us completely and loves us still. Like Zacchaeus, we can take the chance, invite Jesus in, and watch the radical realigning of our lives. Zacchaeus' life changes greatly. Something in his encounter changed the way Zacchaeus saw the world. Now he could see people in need, whereas before he only saw people he could use. That's part of what happens when we come out of the tree and allow Jesus to touch us, whereas before we might be just looking Jesus enables us to really see. We see true beauty in others. We see real opportunities to get involved. We now see real people with real needs. Salvation comes to Zacchaeus' house, and he is forever changed from a taker into a giver. And Zacchaeus is not unique. We do see it over and over again. When Jesus finds a home with us, the results are a generous heart. Giving is a joy, not a burden. What's given may be money, may be time, may be some ability that can be shared. But time and time again, when Jesus plucks us out of our trees, we too ripen into givers, not takers, workers, not watchers, people who serve, not observe. Jesus isn't just coming to our town today. Jesus is already here. And he may be looking up at you, inviting you out of some safe but lonely perch and inviting you into the kingdom of God. And to that, we can all say, Amen. 
Each week in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never made that decision before today, we invite you to do so while we sing a hymn together. I'll meet you down front, and I'll share with you a confession of faith that we find in Holy Scripture, and then we'll look forward to your baptism in the near future. Maybe today you have made that decision, or one similar to it, and maybe today you'd like to reaffirm or rededicate your life to Christ, and we would rejoice in that the same way. Or maybe today is the day that you would like to join Compass Christian Church and make us your church home. As we sing together both our invitation and communion hymn, I come with joy. Let's make any or all of these decisions. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved, and free. The way for Jesus to recall, in love laid down for me, in love laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find us all around. The in the name of Jesus, our Savior and living Lord. We recall how Jesus made himself known to his friends in the breaking of the bread, and how their hearts were set ablaze when they talked and communed with each other. May our hearts rejoice and our tongues be filled with praise as we also come to meet him here. Scripture tells us that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the meal, he took a cup and when he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Let us pray. Oh, our communion is open to all who believe you do not have to be a member of this denomination or even this congregation to partake. Please, as the elements are passed to you, take a cup, two cups. One is the bread on bottom. Go ahead and eat the bread as you are served. And then hold on to the cup of juice that we will partake together. Know that all of our communion is gluten-free, so all are welcome to partake. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son. These elements which represent your broken body and shed blood in remembrance of you. Help us, be with us, and guide us. Help us to come down from our sycamore trees, to join the world, to show your love to all that we come in contact with. Help us to show the world how much you love us and how much you love them. In Jesus' name we do pray.
God, for the people of God, my friends, thanks be to God. As Zacchaeus came down from the tree and shared of his wealth for the people in need, we have the opportunity today to give, to support not just our church here, but also there are flyers in the back for to support the Christian Church in Ohio and Camp Christian, the Renewal Initiative. They're having their campaign now, so please feel free to, free to give here as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. Please accept these contributions in return. Use them for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We do have several church life events going on. The first one is not actually a church life event, but it is a good event. This afternoon, the choir that I sing in, entitled Musica Sacra, which means sacred music, um, has its fall concert. We will be performing the Schubert Mass in E flat and the Mozart Dixit and Magnificat, uh, both with full orchestra and both in the Cathedral of the Basilica, St. Mary's in Covington. Big church, big music. Um, I, I put it in the Wednesday email. Hopefully you all saw that. I know it's a, kind of late to be announcing it. But it's going to be a rainy, gloomy afternoon, so if you would like to come and hear some music totally free of charge, and that will hopefully just leave you saying, wow, um, you're all invited to come here. here. And you can't hear me at all. It's the only group that, you, that I sing in that I don't stick out. So come and hear a real choir sing. It's awesome. Tuesday night is elders meeting. I know that feels really early elders because it is. It's November 1st, but it's the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, we are on chapter 2 in our book, so if you all can read that, we will discuss chapter 2. Disciples Women is Wednesday morning. I don't know who's next. Yes, I do. Eve, because I'm teaching it. Eve. We will be celebrating Eve on Wednesday. And then Refit, Wednesday night disco ball and all and next Sunday you all get to have pizza and cookies with our search committee uh, I'm laughing about that a little bit but it is incredibly important this time that you take um, next week to talk to the search committee to share your heart to let them know what you're looking for in your next pastor in a casual non confrontal kind of way um, please come with your questions. They should be enough into the process that they can answer your questions, and if not, they can get the answers to them. So please, please, please make every effort next week to stay after for pizza and cookies with our search committee. And I think the committee, you know, they took it, they took that from a four page form to four questions. So please honor, honor their work and, and please try to, from the heart, answer those four questions. And there are links both on our uh, Facebook page, there are links that come out in the Wednesday email, there are links everywhere to this if you just want to sit down and type some stuff in. I know people would rather do that as well. So, 
Oh yeah, and just to, so it doesn't sneak up on us like the elders meeting did, MLT and board, we're next, next Tuesday. So uh, this week is elders, next week is our MLT and board. Next Sunday, we will have the names, not names, we will have the cards, the ornaments on our tree for our Christmas gifts for Faith Alliance. So um, be on the lookout for that. Lauren is already working on that, and we'll see them next week. As Dave mentioned, the Renewal Initiative, which is the annual can campaign for the Ohio region. I will also be attending this weekend the Regional Church Council meeting. Um, I will hopefully have lots of information to come and share back with you from that meeting, as well as sharing my report as the Spiritual Life Committee Chair. So, Any other church life events, outreach opportunities to share about? Election Day. Election Day baked goods. Sign-up sheet is on the Welcome Center. We need two things. We need baked goods, lots of them. There are three precincts. It's going to be a very busy election day, not like the last one we had. Um, so we need lots of baked goods, and we also need some people to help serve. So both of those sign-up sheets are on the Welcome Center. Those on Zoom, if you're able to help us, please contact Sally. Reach out to Sally and let her know that you can help. Thank you. Sorry about that. Anything else? Let's all stand together for our closing song. And Susan Hartman in the house. you so much and forgives you and God knows you will do the work necessary to repair the brokenness in this world so go forth and heal and build up and just love one another amen